What's up, guys? We're going to be talking about benchmark fractions and decimals on a number line. What? What? All right, so first thing we have to do is start off with a number line. And a line, it goes continuously in both directions. So the first thing we need to do is put our 0 and 1, because we're going to focus between 0 and 1 on a number line. Now, you can have, you can do this between any two whole numbers, but we're going to focus between 0 and 1 for today. So the first thing we have is to put our, we're going to start with tenths. And so we have 10 dashes between the 0 and 1. So it's going to take 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The tenth one should be there. We don't count the step when we're on 0. All right, so let's go on. If we were to go to the next one, we could see that we have 1 tenth. Because between 0 and 1, the first step is going to be 1 tenth, which also can be written as a fraction like this, 1 tenth. Same thing. And then you have 2 tenths, which can be written as a fraction like 2 tenths. And then 3 tenths, which can be written as a fraction like 3 tenths. You got it. 4 tenths, which can be written as a fraction like 4 tenths. Then 5 tenths, which is halfway there, which can also be written as 5 tenths. 6 tenths, which is 6 tenths, 7 tenths as a decimal, 7 tenths as a fraction, 8 tenths as a decimal, 8 tenths as a fraction, 9 tenths as a decimal, and 9 tenths as a fraction. So how would we use this? Well, we can use these things, these benchmark fractions, and being able to go between fractions and decimals and relating it to a number line in sentences. So let's look at this next word problem. Now, I know it's not 36 here, or 37 here, and 38 here, but we're gonna we're gonna use this basic knowledge to help us. Now this this word problem says Ella finished a bike race in 37 and 6 tenths minutes. Miranda finished the bike race finished the race in 9 and 1 tenths minutes sooner than Ella finished it. How many minutes did it take Miranda to finish the race? So the first thing I notice is that this is in decimal form and this is in fraction form. So we need to convert them both to the same thing. Just to make it easier, let's write them both as a decimal. So first thing we have is 37 and 6 tenths. So there we have 37 and 6 tenths. And then we have 9 and 1 tenth. So if we look at 1 tenth, it's going to be written as a decimal like this. But our whole number is 9. So it's going to look more like this, where we have 9 as our whole number and 1 tenth as our decimal. So this is the same thing as this. So now we have to figure out operation. Well, if it says Miranda finished the race 9 and 1 tenth minutes sooner than Ella finished it, how many minutes did it take Miranda to finish it? So if Miranda finished sooner, we are going to be doing subtraction. So then we need to go ahead and line up our decimals like as so, and then we can go ahead and finish the subtraction problem. 6 minus 1 is 5, and 7 minus 9, we're going to have to regroup. So the 7 becomes 17, and the, two, and the 3 becomes a 2. So 17 minus 9 is going to be 8, and 2 minus nothing else is going to be 2. So our answer is 28 and 5 tenths. So that is how we can use a problem uh, and use a number line with the benchmark fractions like 1 tenth and 2 tenths and 3 tenths and 4 tenths, 5 tenths, 6 tenths, 7 tenths, 8 tenths, and 9 tenths to help us solve a problem. But these aren't our only benchmark fractions. We can also have halves. So let's look at a number line again. But this time, let's focus on halves and fourths. So if we have a half, we're going to have to put a line right down the middle. Now we can have some other lines, and if you notice on this number line up here, we did have half right down the middle was 5 tenths, but we're going to put half right here, and we're going to focus on the 5 tenths here. Now 5 tenths, this is like the other ones, it can be also written as 1 half. Now we also wrote it like 5 tenths, but it also can be 1 half. And then if we have, break that into two more sections, we might have one-fourth. So this could also mean like quarters. So 25 hundredths 
just like it takes four quarters to make up one whole, we can think of between zero and one, our fourths, just like one fourth is gonna be the, it's gonna be 25 hundredths or 25 cents, 50 cents, and so forth. Now half can also be written as two fourths. So one half and two fourths are the same thing. And then we have, of course, our 75 cents or 75 hundredths if we break these into fourths. So we have one fourth, which is 25 hundredths, two fourths or one half, which is five tenths, and then three fourths, which is 75 hundredths. And those are between zero and one. So these are our benchmarks for fractions we have here. So we can think of one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, or one fourth, one half, three fourths. Or if we, again, if we break it into quarters, 25 hundredths, five tenths, 75 hundredths, one. Now, let's apply this same principle to a word problem. Let's say we have Harold cut 18 and a half inches, well, half is the same thing as five tenths, off a rope that was 60 inches long. How is the length of the remaining rope in inches written as a written in decimal form? So we're gonna have to write this as a decimal. So let's go ahead and change this into a decimal. So 18 and a half, our whole number is gonna be 18, but 18 and a half is the same thing as five tenths because five is half of 10. So 18 and 5 tenths could look like this. Now, we, Harold, cut 18 and 5 tenths off a rope that was 60 inches long. How is long was the length, how is the length of the remaining rope in, inch, in inches written in decimal form? So we want the remaining. So if she cut it off, is the remaining gonna be shorter or longer? Yeah, it's gonna be shorter. So we need to write this, but we notice we have a decimal and when we add and subtract decimals, we need to line up the decimals. So 60 has a decimal, but you just don't see it. It's that imaginary decimal to the right. So we have 60 and 0 tenths. Now we could subtract. So we have 60 minus 18 and 5 tenths. So we're going to have to do some regrouping because we can't do 0 minus 5. And so we're going to have to go all the way to the tens place to regroup. The 6 becomes a 5, the this 0 becomes a 10, wait, we have to cross that out, it becomes a 9, and this one becomes a 10, so we have 10 tenths, because we've grouped all the way to the tenths place. So now we can subtract, we've regrouped, and we can subtract. 10 minus 5 is 5, and 9 minus 8 is 1, and 5 minus 1 is 4, which means Harold has 41 and 5 tenths written in decimal form. He has 41 and 5 tenths remaining. Well, that's how we can use benchmark fractions and converting those benchmark fractions to help us solve problems. I hope this helps you out. If you have any more questions, just ask your teacher. Thanks for watching. Bye.